Welcome everyone to this first module in the Caesar MOOC on Digital Technologies. In this first module we're going to be looking at the idea of data, what data is and how is it relevant to the Digital Technologies curriculum. And the relevance of data is all connected to the idea of computational thinking. Computational thinking is a problem-solving process where one of the main goals is to come up with an automated solution to a problem, just as a computer would implement. Computational thinking involves analysing a problem to try and understand exactly what a problem means, and then once that is understood, coming up with the idea of what information is actually needed in order to solve that problem, and that's what we call the data. Once you have those two, then the process follows to define the sequence of steps that are needed in order to actually solve the problem. And that's what we call the algorithm. It might be useful for us to think about an example. In this example, we're looking at the situation of someone sorting a series of blocks. The data that we need in this case is the colour of the blocks. And as we can see the sequence of steps, they consist of picking up a block, looking at it to see if we can identify its colour, and then working out which pile of already sorted blocks this new block belongs to. We use algorithms every day to help us solve problems, but we don't usually think of the specific individual things that we do. Like, consider the case of picking up a box. Whenever we pick up a box, there is a sequence of bending, grabbing the box, and then lifting it and standing. But when we do this, we don't actually have to spell out what each individual step is, we just do it. However, when we're instructing a computer or thinking about computational thinking, we do have to think about each individual step. There are some cases where, however, we do actually think about each step, and that's often when we're teaching someone else how to do something, like tying a knot, uh, perhaps, or tying their shoelaces, or even a bow. These are lots of things that we do in our day, particularly when we're teaching young people, where we actually break down a problem into the individual steps. For example, making a bed, we talk about putting the sheets on, putting the pillowcases onto the pillow, making the sheets tidy. Also brushing our teeth, we talk about putting the toothpaste onto the toothbrush, then the water, and then we actually brush. So there's a sequence of steps that we use, that we use to instruct our children in the same way that we would use to describe the steps for a, an algorithm for a computer. Now, this module is actually about data, and now that we understand how data is used, let's have a little bit of a closer look at the data. Now, there are many different examples of data around you. Essentially, data is just a piece of information about something, such as the colour of the blocks we just saw, but we might just as easily have decided to sort those blocks by their size sorting smaller blocks into one pile and larger blocks into another. An important aspect of computational thinking is determining what data is actually needed to solve a problem, and then ignoring any other data that might also be present but that doesn't actually help us solve our problem. In the rest of this module, we will look more closely at different kinds of data that you might want to use when solving problems, and the different ways that data can be represented. We will also look at patterns in data and why patterns are particularly important in computational thinking. We will also present some specific classroom activities that we think might, might be useful for you in exploring data, incorporating aspects of collecting, analysing and presenting data in the classroom. Finally, we will end the module with a small activity and a collection of additional resources or example activities that we hope you find useful.